Hello Uganda, welcome to episode 8 of the Pearl of Africa Star Search. Before we unveil our final top 8, this week our 12 stars got the tourism challenge of a lifetime. A 481 km trip to the deep west in the green hills of Chisoro, the home of the Silverback. Thanks to our airline partner Aerolink and the comfortable Uganda Wildlife Authority Safari Bus, the journey was nothing short of epic. While we were going up the hill, I felt like, when is this going to end, honestly? <laughs> and I had been to Kabale before, but this was a different experience. It felt, honestly, it felt movie-like. Those corners, man, our bus got stuck. The idea is to dig up this area so the bus can go a little wider and make the turn. Otherwise, it's too tight. When our bus got stuck, I said, now this is the experience. <laughs> they say in Luganda, Muno Mukabiye Muno Dara. Right? When the bus got stuck, I don't know where people came from. Came running in masks. People, I said, hey, dude, what's happening? Okay, this is Uganda. And man, people came Bambi and they helped a lot. I want to take this opportunity on behalf of uh, management of Uganda Wildlife Authority to welcome you uh, into Bwindi Impenetrable National Park. You are all most welcome. We must at all times uh, follow the standard operating procedures by having our masks on and uh, by sanitizing ourselves all the time and maintaining social distance as we move and as we do our activities. We have eight habituated gorilla groups. So our capacity for the visitors is actually 64 because we take a maximum of eight visitors per uh, gorilla group. Uh, once we get closer to the gorillas, we must maintain, of course, a low voice, uh, but also when it comes to actual viewing them, we must maintain a distance of 10 meters from the gorillas to us. This is because gorillas are part of the great apes that are very close to human presence. So we can easily contract diseases from one another. And that is why we put those rules. Buindi is one of the very important parks that we have in Uganda because of the mountain gorillas and is one of the world heritage sites that we have in the country. You have to be equipped at least with enough food drinking water, plus some cookies or packed lunch so that you are ready to walk for the whole day in case they move a bit far. Going up the mountain and then you know sloping again like you feel like your knees are burning all the time but you don't want to stop because you still want to see the gorillas. It was not that easy, it was really nerve-breaking and muscle-cracking, you know, climbing all those hilly places, moving around the trees, the coldness, the insects biting you. It's 
just like they say, impenetrable. Of course, we have uh, parts that we follow from the guides. You know, these guides know this place, I think, in and out. They even create new parts. Like, they always work with uh, machetes, pangas, and when there's no road, they keep on. We finally reached the top. Uh, I was seated on a branch, and then I hear a sound. So it got me scared. I'm like, this is about to go down now. These gorillas move, and their movements depend on the availability of food. These gorillas are vegetarians, 98% vegetarians. But still, they are selective. They don't eat every plant they come across. So they select some of the plants. They only eat ants for proteins. Only, apart from ants, they only feed on vegetation. This mother <laughs> just living in the moment. The big one was there trying to sleep, and the kids were all over its back, and you know, not giving it time to rest and all that. Like it felt like a human thing. Like I'm like, these are like human beings. The only problem is they don't speak like we do. We share 98.4 of our DNA with, with the gorillas. The size, man, do we have people like that? Big and enormous. And uh, the, guide, the guide actually told us uh, that it can weigh up to around 250 kilograms. Imagine it slaps you, man. Ow! Your head is off. The sound that you make if you want to show them that you're peaceful, mum, mum. So, like, uh, if it does, ooh, then you just be like, mum, as if you're calling your mum, you know? <laughs> These gorillas make nests on a daily basis. They make new nests every day. So trackers keep with the gorillas 
for the whole day. In the evening, gorillas start making their nests. That's when the trackers leave after knowing where they have nested from so that it is easy for them the next day to locate these gorillas because they go to the point where they left them and they start from there. I don't think I've ever seen something so beautiful because we actually got to see a family um, of gorillas. Um, so I just think it was a lovely experience because so many people come from all over the world to come and see this. And um, we have it right here in our backyard. So it was nice to, um, as Ugandans and as citizens, to come and be able to experience it for the first time. <laughs>